It's DC Talks Coloured People on Vision Christian Radio. Neil with you. It is the Thursday edition of 2020 and an opportunity to join in a conversation. And when we're talking about the movies, you might have been to see some of the movies we'll talk about today. And you might like to even contribute to our conversation as we get things underway about how talking about the movies can move into a conversation about faith. Lots of people have been off to see the movies lately. It's like uh, there's a a return to the cinemas. People have been off to see the Barbie movie. And there's, of course, been some mixed reactions around the content of Oppenheimer. There's also a new and controversial film released called Sound of Freedom. We'll talk about that coming just ahead. It deals with child trafficking. It's called a Christian thriller. Now, that's been criticised for stoking some conspiracy theories and its depiction of human trafficking, but it appears Christians seem to love this film. You might have your own thoughts. You might have already been to see it, Sound of Freedom. Well, our special guest today is film reviewer Russ Matthews, who helps Christians engage with films without disengaging faith. He works with City Bible Forum's Third Space. He leads Real Dialogue, a creative connection between the Christian faith and the entertainment culture. He does film reviews, downloadable discussion guides, got resources and hosts events too. Russ Matthews, a special welcome back to 2020. Uh, Neil, it's always great. I love getting on this show, but then on top of it, hanging out with you is one of the highlights of my week, but then also to get to talk about movies <laughs> and faith. Wow, this is just like right in my sweet spot. I'll, I'm willing to do whatever you need me to do today. It's like you've got the dream <laughs> job, isn't it? Uh, you know, you, you get to sit all day and watch movies, and then you write a few thoughts about them. I mean, I'm sure it's a little bit more complicated than that because obviously if you're getting a faith dimension, you've got to work a bit harder. But, uh, but hey, you have got the dream job, Russ. Oh, well, you know, it's a dream to me. I, 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 I absolutely love what I get to do. I mean, it is. There is a lot of work behind it because what's fascinating about it, because I do get to see quite a few films in any given week, but I have to see the good ones and the bad ones. And then I also have to actually write content that is honoring, but then also um, hopefully challenges people beyond just whether or not they should watch it or not. But um, yeah, it, so it, it is it is a, a privilege to be able to do, and I'll never take it for granted. Um, so, and also it means that I get to hang out with cool people like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about um, because there's a different dimension here. We're not just going to talk about some of the blockbuster movies or the new films that have been released, right. but we also want to bring in this dimension uh, that how you connect an understanding of what you've just seen at the cinema to those conversations right. you're going to have around the dinner table or the water cooler or your friends uh, with church or outside of church. And, and so faith conversations that come out of these sorts of movies do you have to work hard to discover these faith elements? And uh, I guess we're talking here about movies that aren't necessarily Christian faith movies, but right. people like you get to bring out the faith dimensions. Yeah, I, th- I think that's one of the things we've talked about on, on the show in the past. And the thing I love doing, because uh, uh, it's something I get to do almost weekly as far as Christian and non-Christians who really love engaging with film, but then as I always say, putting um, film through a gospel or biblical lens and giving us an opportunity to kind of point people towards the messaging from the film that actually can help us to start a conversation about God, Jesus, the gospel. And uh, this is something I think you can do. We've done this in the past with um, pretty much any film. Um, But then on top of it, where it's it's where you're willing to listen to the other person and what they saw in the film, but then also how you're able to engage. And it doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't have to be that weird. Um, It really can be an opportunity to say, hey, did you see this? Did you see that element in the film? What do you think about that? And it just kind of starts the conversation. And the beautiful thing about it is that you really can build some good friendships and relationships through those conversations, as well as introducing 
hopefully the most important thing to you, and that is the person of Jesus Christ. And you might even impress your friends because they'll be thinking, oh, you think a little bit more deeply about this film. I mean, I just went along and I had a great time, enjoyed it, and walked out at the end of the day and exactly. eaten a whole lot of popcorn and, and had a Choc Tops ice cream. But, um, but you know, there's something <laughs> deeper in there. And, uh, and so very shortly, I'll make sure that we do uh, give listeners and a way that they can connect with real dialogue so that they can read some of your absolutely incredible reviews, Russ. Hey, let's talk about some of the big blockbuster movies because we want to talk about some things here and I'm hoping that listeners will be able to glean some great insights. Um, You know, the two big blockbusters, Barbie and Oppenheimer, let's start with Barbie and my confession is here. I haven't I haven't seen either, <laughs> so, oh, that's okay. so I'm going to rely on you and uh, and some things that I've done in a bit of research. But uh, the Barbie movie, the Oppenheimer movie. Let's start with Barbie. If you're looking for faith dimensions in the Barbie movie, do you have to dig deep? Oh, I don't think so. I think that um, I mean Barbie is one of those things where it, it's been she's been around for so many years and she's connected on so many different levels and she's had her own controversies over the year as far as body image and all these things that people can talk about um, and with this film I think what they do is uh, it's it's a satire so you need to kind of understand that it's a satire it's meant to be humorous it's meant to kind of um, poke fun at not only the Barbie dolls but then also Mattel itself. But then for us, the, the thing is that Barbie is it's amazing. They actually really kind of go into um, she starts having thoughts about death and the realities of life. And it's not just kind of a happy pink world that she's living in. And that's because the person that kind of plays with her in the real world, not in Barbie land, is going through those things and just kind of experiencing them her, themselves. And so the the conversation albeit you can agree with the film or like the film i wasn't a huge fan of the film but i felt like it had some great discussion points that helped us to push us towards biblical answers to these questions that they opened in the film and they didn't really have satisfactory answers for while i think we have some solutions especially some great um, opportunities to have those discussions from a biblical or Christian perspective. Do you think when you're watching a movie, it's not a Christian film, so there's not some special takeaway message from it, uh, but when you're actually watching a film like the Barbie movie or any of the other big blockbusters that are in the cinemas, you're actually looking for the questions because yeah. as the Christian believer, we're going to bring some insight from God uh, God's revelation, something that is going to connect reality. Uh, So you're actually asking the questions of the film. So even if you can't dig all that deep and can't actually uh, analyze and articulate uh, the things that you are really able to do, but you can begin to ask questions about the film. Is that something important to master? That is that it's something and I don't even know. I mean, because I'm still working on it, too. Like, how, how do you do this and how do you weave it into conversation um, and make it engaging and not pushing people away or seeming too odd? But it, it really isn't too hard, especially with both Barbie and Oppenheimer. These are they ask some huge questions. And if you're thinking about it, even based on the last sermon you heard or at, when you're having your devotions and you're reading through the Bible, it's amazing how God really provides those answers for us. That text that was written thousands of years ago, and we can see has really been going on since the beginning of time as far as the stories, how they still speak into and how our world hasn't changed too much. And our stories still come from that. And I feel that every story, including all movies, point back to what we have with God's story or the meta narrative, whatever, however you want to call it. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, I can have examples. I mean, I, I can tell you because I usually go see films. I tend to be in um, the movie theater with people who aren't from a Christian background, but yet they're asking these questions. They're going, well, what'd you see about this? And what about that? And, and why, why would you reject this idea? Or, um, you know, they're talking about death. They're talking about, Um, All of these different areas that we have answers for um, through the Bible, but it's also how we introduce that and make you just add that into the conversation. As somebody came out with uh, in the Barbie movie, uh, connecting to the real world with issues like death and cellulite. Now, uh, (laughs) men tend not to be concerned about that, but women are concerned about that. 
And Christians don't necessarily have anything to add to the cellulite challenge, but if you can actually connect those real-world uh, issues, uh, there is something that you're going to be able to find that a Christian does have a conversation and something worthy of offering. And as you mentioned, you know, uh, there's this issue around dying and uh, and, and cellulite. <laughs> I know. I, you, you're a master in bringing in the one thing that I don't know if I've ever talked about um, online and that were in fil- in a review would be cellulite. But what's interesting about that, the, the whole cellulite side of things really comes down to women particular in, when it comes to body image. And I think we lose sight of the fact that God created both men and women, and also God loves us how we are, the package we come in, and he, you know, allowing that, you know, regardless of how much cellulite or little you have on you, and that really that we have a God that does care and love us regardless of how we look or how we feel. And, and so I think that that's... We do actually have um, ways to be able to kind of address it without even being cheeky. I mean, I, you can ha- kind of have fun and kind of laugh about it, but you're going, but the reality is that people are struggling with these things. And I think that we can, um, you know, I mean, it, it could mean, no, maybe you still need to go out and have a good run or maybe have a good workout every once in a while to kind of work on that cellulite issue. But just because you have cellulite doesn't mean that God doesn't love you, you know. And so that's, that's why I just I love about it, these conversations because people try to do that all the time. They're going, well, what about that? And I'm like going, well, but really the Bible does have something to say about it. And, and I don't even think we have to work that hard, but it's just a matter of just kind of knowing your Bible and, and enjoying the conversation. And on top of it, then throwing it back to the other person and going, what do you think? I mean, uh, am I off here? I mean, am I completely out there and just kind of, you know, am I dealing in a world that doesn't exist? But thankfully we do have one with, we do have answers, I think, with the Bible. It's one thing, isn't it, uh, to engage with a cellulite conversation, uh, but then (laughs) those other more deep uh, issues. Right. Uh, I'm I'm not even sure where I got this from in some uh, reading a uh, review. I hope it was yours. Uh, but uh, the attempt to dismantle the vicious nature of this world's definition of toxic masculinity oh, yeah. and women's self identity. Uh, they managed to create an atmosphere of toxic femininity. There's this sort of uh, this concept of if there is a toxic masculinity that people talk about, suddenly you've got a movie that moves the pendulum from one side to the other, and all of a sudden there's the creation of a toxic femininity. Now, I'm not sure. I mean, as I mentioned, uh, my confession was I haven't seen the film, but but you've got right. masculinity and femininity, and there's a biblical Christian revelationary thing that you can speak into about that type of topic. Exactly. Uh- well, thank you, Neil, for reading my review. It was like your going, oh, I'm, wow, I'm glad it was yours. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good. But um, and that's probably one of the. I mean, because for me with Barbie, the two struggles I had with it is that they they ad- address the whole issue of the patriarchy and kind of toxic masculinity, which I can appreciate people at, uh, kind of going after. But unfortunately, the pendulum swung completely the opposite way, and they kind of their answer is. A kind of another extreme on the other end, which isn't really quite helpful, opposed to really seeing the value of both men and women as they are and the, you know, how they bring value to this world because God created it and God created them in his image. And so um, to be able to kind of talk into that and kind of speak to it. Yeah, also, the other thing is that I feel like this is a movie that's for um, for adults, not, not that it's an adult movie, but that it's for the deep thoughts and some of the things that their considerations that they're going into are really for the adults that played maybe with Barbie when they were little, but this isn't really for your seven year old who's going to be walking in with their Barbie going, Ooh, I can't wait to see a Barbie movie. And cause it's not that sort of thing. So I felt like it was marketed a little bit poorly, but they, I mean, they've done a great job cause obviously it's done exceptionally well worldwide. Um, but if it does anything, I really love the fact that we can have conversations like this here today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one thing I know I did get from your article uh, is the thought that there is a message in the Barbie movie about the value of mothers. Mm. Uh, you thought that there was a very endearing character in the film, Gloria, uh, a Mattel employee struggling to, ne- to connect with her teenage daughter. Uh, give us your in- impressions here. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think that that's because the thing is that a movie like this and what you've seen worldwide is that so many mothers are taking their daughters out to go see Barbie. My my girls actually look like we have three daughters who who look like Barbie. They have long blonde hair. They grew up having Barbies and all that sort of thing. And um, this film really shows how invested the mother needs to be in the or parents need to be in their children's lives and that they may be getting all of these messages from the world all things kind of come in their way but yet it's when you have parents but specifically mothers invested in their daughters lives in their children's lives that they are the ones that are really able to be the closest to and having the greatest influence on them and so i see that one that's one of the things i i felt was a positive takeaway from a film like this is that you can have a positive influence, but also sometimes you have to go through the difficult things because not not every time will your child embrace you or be excited about the message you're trying to deliver or that you want to care for them or they see that you're trying to keep them safe. But really, in the end, it's really showing how important mothers are and how parents are in their children's lives. And so I, that's one thing I, it was a positive takeaway and something I really found value of. And also even because I watched it with my wife, I watched the movie with my wife. And that's one of the things that she really saw, too, was it was a great way to kind of celebrate the value of parents in their children's lives. So whether it's a discussion about motherhood or it's about toxic masculinity and even the emergence of a toxic femininity or whether it's the, you know, the pursuit of. Uh, the real world uh, in uh, in contrast to uh, the world that is the perfect world that Barbie came from. Uh, there's all sorts of ways that the Christian believer can uh, begin to uh, engage in conversations. And this is what you do Great. so masterfully. So uh, you're able to do that. And let's just take this to a practical level because last year you had a dive deeper campaign uh, run by City Bible Forum. And, you know, you got on board with that too. And this encouragement that during the month of September, you want uh, people all around the nation to plan to have three engaging conversations. I mean, you've probably for some set the bar low. Some people are saying I'm having three a day. Others are saying, <laughs> well, it's three a year, but uh, but three in the month of September. Give us an insight here into this Dive Deeper campaign and how you can move, use movies to make that happen. That's right. Well, so because you can use movies, but we really want to encourage people, you don't have to use movies. It's really more of taking something that you're interested in, uh, be it sport, be it family, be it um, whatever it is that you have, and you have a community, and you may have Christians and non-Christians involved in that, but then how you can actually move from that interest into something um, that really kind of centers on Jesus or the Bible. And we what we do is we also kind of move the bar lower. It's not necessarily that you have to work all the way through the gospel um, and get to the end and see somebody converted. It's just getting the conversation started getting to the point of kind of introducing your worldview, if it be a Christian worldview, into the conversation, if it is about the Matildas, or if it's about food, or if it's something along those lines, that you can kind of move it that direction. And so what we are doing in September, starting in September, it's the Dive Deeper campaign, it's divedeeper.org.au, and we just encourage people to have three conversations in the three weeks where they can go through and how they get the conversation started. But what's great about it is that we give you training. We we if you go through and register, you you actually can take a quiz and find out what type of evangelist you are. So you have either the hesitant or the busy or the enthusiast, and then specific training on how you would get the conversation started and how you'd be able to have three conversations in three weeks. And uh, it's a it's really a lot of fun. I'm I'm right right there with you. I think I probably have more than three conversations in any given in any given month, but. To have three conversations in three weeks, I can do that, and also that we can share with others and encourage them that we're actually getting out there and doing it ourselves. Well, film reviewer Russ Matthews is our guest. Let's open our talkback lines. You might like to contribute to our conversation today. Uh, Russ helps Christians engage with films without disengaging faith. You might have your own perspectives around what it is to be a Christian believer, to be able to make sense of the movie you've seen, whether it's a Christian film or whether it's not a Christian film, the opportunity is there in either to be able to ask the right questions and to engage a person you're talking to on an issue of faith. 1-800-316-316. And if you want to read Russ's 
uh, his critique of the Barbie movie, the one we've just been talking about. You'll be able to find that at realdialogue.com. That's real, spelled R-E-E-L, realdialogue.com. And we're going to talk some more about the Dive Deeper campaign too for the month of September. Russ is our guest. Talk Back Line open. Back with more in just a few moments. Our Talk Back Line is open. 1-800-316-316. Do you ever ask those sorts of questions of a film that you're looking at? Most of us go to the movies and we're looking for an entertainment experience. But some of us will be saying, well, I agree with or I disagree with some of the things in that film and they may actually lead to an incredible conversation that you can have with the people that you went to see the film with or your family around the dinner table or that that water cooler conversation. 1-800-316-316 to join in our conversation today. Our special guest is film reviewer Russ Matthews who helps Christians engage with films without disengaging faith. He leads real dialogue. Hey, Hey, Russ, let's talk about another big blockbuster, and that is the film uh, Oppenheimer. And yeah. uh, you know, and and it's considered to be another great film. I've, I've had people on the program saying, "Don't go and see that." There's all sorts of graphic sex scenes in there, and mm. uh, and as a Christian, you'd be very cautious, perhaps, uh, in the way that you might choose to go and see the right. film. But but what what are your overall impressions of Oppenheimer? Oh, you know, I mean, this is a, a, a amazing depiction based on the, the a book um, called the Prome- American Prometheus, based on J. Robert Oppenheimer, who was a part of leading the making of the original atomic bomb and really brought the atomic era in. And it's directed by one of the best directors out there, Christopher Nolan. Um, Christopher, obviously, with Dark Knight and also Inception, um, he's known for. But this is a biopic, three hours long. I went in and I'm going, oh, man, three hours. Is this really going to keep my attention? I went with um, a friend of mine who's not a Christian. Um, he admits that to not, not being a Christian, but was really keen to go see it with me. And they don't waste a minute. I mean, this it, there's a huge cast. It's a, it's a three-hour, you know, epic film. Quality-wise, it is fantastic. I mean, it is just a, a beautiful film. It's done exceptionally well. It's written well. Um, it is, it does have confronting content, so it's really worthwhile. They do kind of hit on some of the realities that, um, Oppenheimer wasn't necessarily the most moral of characters. And so it does have some content as be it some sexual content and also some confronting elements of kind of the moral issues that kind of go on in somebody making what would become one of this, the, and what it did. But for me, the value of it wasn't even just with the quality of the film, which I think that it was exceptionally done. Uh, now, when but we talk, it was the conversation afterwards that was so great. I just thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with my friend afterwards. And, and when you go to see a film like that, uh, you've gone along uh, with your, as you say, you often will go to films with your non-Christian friends, and uh, they sure. might not be so concerned about, you know, whether there's some graphic nudity in the film. But uh, you've sat through it, and at the end of the film, though. The richness of a conversation will come when they are asking you and perhaps your thoughts about it. And, and of course, you're the film reviewer, so everyone's asking your thoughts. But, but you know, when you're in that conversation uh, with the non-Christian and they've had their own impressions of the film, you've got lots of richness to be able to draw on. That's right. Well, and the thing... What's great about it too, Neil, is that you got to keep in mind too that we, it just starts the conversation. So these things that we have in common, so we have we've watched this film together, we're able to kind of we've had this shared experience. We go through and talk about some of the big topics with this film. You know, you talk about how do you deal with unleashing really death on the world in uh, making of a bomb. But then on top on top of it. Just because this man, Oppenheimer, was a genius didn't make him wise. And some of the things he chose to do and some of the relationships that he had didn't make that. And so for me to be able to have that conversation with my friend, but then it goes beyond that. Then all of a sudden, how does that reflect it in my life? And how what how does your faith play into that? And so then it just kind of takes you down trails. You may not even be talking about Oppenheimer or a film anymore, but you're talking about the real world. You're talking about yourselves. And it just opens the door for a, a rich conversation. I, I'm not going to necessarily tell people that they have to go see a movie like Oppenheimer to do that. I mean, if, if these sort of things cause 
you to pause or cause you to sin in your own way or, or would just take you to places you don't want to go, don't see the film. I mean, I, I wouldn't be doing that. But if you do go see this film, what I would say is that you can use it as a catalyst to be able to talk with people about your faith. And one of those deeper issues that you've drawn out in your own review is this thought that there is a warning for the world about the dangers of unchecked power, uh, Mm. about the scientific advancements that might not necessarily be around an atomic bomb, but all sorts of other scientific advancements uh, that in the wrong hands uh, can make weapons of mass destruction. These sorts of questions, big questions of uh, of life and reality and meaning, uh, these come out of a movie like this. Definitely. I mean, and I think that that's... That's that, and that's what they're meant to do. But then on top of it, if you're really putting it through that biblical lens, like I've said to do, um, you see how also we have answers and what you can see even in the Bible. I mean, I think that's one of the things that um, if you're even going back to the stories of the Bible, which includes um, graphic scenes, um, uh, you know, death, all of the mass death and all these things that have happened throughout human history, but yet how God has not changed and he still has the answer and the solutions for us. And so really being able to go back to what we have in our faith, to be able to kind of talk to these big topics, even though they might seem new because it's a new film or maybe recent history opposed to ancient history, but yet how the answers are still the same and they are still quite satisfying, but we have to be willing to talk about them. Uh, Let's squeeze in a quick call before news. Pinky is in Regency Downs in Queensland. Hey, Pinky, are you out in your truck today? No, no, I'm at home today, Neil. I've got the other trucks working. Pinky, need to be quick, nearly news time. What were your thoughts? Uh, right, I went and seen Hiding Place last night with um, my lovely wife, the brain, Marita, and uh, yes. absolutely loved it. And uh, we had a great conversation uh, with the playwright uh, who was part of that cinematography just last week. And uh, just a very good need to get a quick comment here, but Pinky, thank you for reminding us. Uh, your thoughts here, Russ? Uh, the oh, hiding place. If you, oh, if you guys, if you get a chance to get out and see this, it's amazing because it's only going to be a short time in theaters. Hiding place, Corey Ten Boom's story. Even though it happened so many years ago, it still resonates through history. I think it is one worth seeing. If you are, are able to access it um, and see this amazing production, I would highly recommend it. Thank you, Pinky, for actually bringing it up. Pinky, thank you so much for your call. And uh, that Hiding Place film, I think it had a single-day release in cinemas, in various right. cinemas yesterday in Australia, but then it eventually will find its way onto one of the streaming platforms. So it's a matter of uh, keeping your eye out for it. A 1-800-316-316. If you'd like to join in our conversation today, our special guest is film reviewer Russ Matthews. He works with City Bible Forum's Third Space. He leads real dialogue a creative connection between the christian faith and the entertainment culture you might have your own thoughts 1-800-316-316 we're back with more after vision national news wonderful to have you with us on this thursday edition of 2020 if you are just joining us joining into a fascinating conversation as we talk about some of the latest blockbuster movies and how conversations about movies create opportunity for conversations about faith Lots of people have been off to see big blockbuster movies like Barbie or Oppenheimer. And there's another one we're going to talk about this coming uh, segment. A new and controversial film released called Sound of Freedom. Dealing with child trafficking, it's a Christian thriller. That's the way it's been described. There's been criticism for stoking conspiracy theories and its depiction of human trafficking. But Christians seem to have embraced this film. It's called Sound of Freedom. We'll talk about it just ahead. But we're also talking about another issue, something that's coming up that's being driven by City Bible Forum and The Third Space. It's called the Dive Deeper Campaign. You might even want to set a little diary note or put a note for you somewhere and put it on the fridge because September, there's this encouragement once again to get into three conversations in three weeks about faith issues. 
And so when we're talking movies, that might be one of those areas you love to talk movies and how you actually bring out a faith theme from those movies. Well, our special guest is Russ Matthews. Russ works with City Bible Forum's Third Space. He leads Real Dialogue, a creative connection between the Christian faith and the entertainment culture. Hey, Russ, uh, just quickly before we talk some more about movies, you released a book just uh, recently. (laughs) It's called The Word Becomes Film. And this is something about what you do too, just encouraging people to ask the right questions and and really enjoy and embrace film. How's your book going? You know what? It's going exceptionally well. I've actually been really pleased with how uh, people have responded to it um, and, and what people are kind of accessing and seeing what we do at Real Dialogue and seeing the the allegory that it is, but so you're able to kind of take the journey along with us, kind of a story that kind of shows us how to do it. But then on top of it, accessing, accessing all of the resources that we have on offer as far as the reviews, the um, events, and also the training that we have and how you use film as a way of kind of starting the conversation. And so, yeah, thanks. Yeah, definitely. I, I've, I thoroughly uh, have enjoyed kind of talking about it, and it's a passion point, and so thanks for bringing it up. Uh, Russ, throw you in the deep end here. Because of what we're talking about today, and we're talking about asking the right questions of a movie, whether it's a good movie, a bad movie, a Christian movie, Mm. a secular movie, is every film uh, an allegory? Is there, because the way we talk about it, you're actually looking to dive deeper into what a film means and how it actually Mm. transcribes to a conversation about real life issues, meaning and faith. So is, is every film in some sense like an allegory when you pick out those main points those themes, uh, those issues, and you can turn them into uh, the story of Christian faith. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know if it's necessarily in the traditional sense of an allegory uh, that, you know, it directly points towards a very specific kind of messaging that they're going for. But what I do think you're right in the sense that every story can point back to God's story, even the bad films, because there's always an element, there's something that can kind of point you towards having that discussion point. And so it's one of the things we are always kind of encouraging people to look at. Also, the fact that there's certain films that I may not like, but other people really love. And so they really engage with those. And then also have a community that they engage with, with those films, be it at work or being in their family or, or wherever. And how they can then take those stories, those story elements, and kind of point people towards biblical ideas and and, uh, concepts and even directly to the person of Jesus through it. And so... Yeah, even good good story, good movies and bad movies, depending on how you see it, because it's very subjective. Um, is that there are those opportunities, and that's why I I enjoy going and seeing them and engaging with them, even a film I don't like. Um, I want to talk with other people about it because I really want to hear why they liked it. One, but two, what they really gained from it. As far as the messaging of it. Well, let's talk about this uh, controversial one called Sound yes, of right. Freedom. I don't know whether you've got a little uh, in a nutshell what this is about, uh, because yeah. uh, I've been reading that people have been critiquing the politics rather than the actual movie storyline. Uh, what, what's the, the storyline basically around Sound of Freedom? And why is it, do you think, that Christians somehow or other are drawn to this? Right. Well, so the story is it's based on the true story of a um, a Homeland Security federal agent, Tim Ballard, who um, what his specific role was within the Homeland Security realm is trying to bring down some of these pedophilia um, type movements that were going on around around the United States, but then was exposed to the fact that there is all of this different trafficking of children and humans, um, specifically within the sex trade around the world. And so his efforts in trying to bring children out of that specifically, but then um, how they could draw attention to the fact that these things are going on. It is an awful part of, um, unfortunately, humanity that is out there. And so what we can do to kind of try and remedy that. And so it's a it's a confronting film, but as a, from a film critic standpoint, I really kind of stay away from kind of some of the external kind of discussions on the politics and all that and look at just what is the quality of the film. It's a well-told story. And the thing I like that I did like about it was that it showed you enough of what was going on without overdoing it. So they were respectful 
in the content as far as drawing you up to the point of kind of seeing the horrors of what are going to occur, but then they close the curtain soon enough with the subtlety so that you don't have to necessarily see or experience some of those things yourself. And so I felt that they, it was a well-told story. It was a really good quality story. But then on top of it, honestly, Neil, I hope I don't have to watch it again. Mainly, just it's one of those you watch for yourself and hopefully you have action. You want to take action and get connected with groups that actually can do something about it. But um, what it leaves you with, it definitely is a long, long tail as far as the things you think about after you watch this film. And uh, there's some organizations and uh, thinking of Destiny Rescue. And uh, I yeah. think we've got something coming up with Destiny Rescue and uh, their thoughts on this film, too. And I know you've drawn attention to Destiny Rescue and, uh, and organizations like them who are actually in this space rescuing right. children who are in those abusive settings and so in some sense when you watch a film like this you're going to be drawn to say what can i do because you'll exactly. perhaps even feel guilty if you do nothing uh, but these sorts of organizations they're in that space and so no no doubt that's why they're actually saying hey this is a film that will draw attention to the sorts of ministry christian work that we're involved in Exactly. Well, and I, and so that they, it does that there are answers, there are solutions. Um, I mean, it is horrific that these sort of things do occur in our world, but the reality is that sin is still there. But thankfully, what we do have in Jesus and um, with what we have with the message of the Bible is a hope, um, even within all of those different horrors that are going on out there. But thankfully, there are organizations like Destiny Rescue where you can point people towards when you say you see a film like this, you go, there are those out there kind of doing it here once you partner with them um, so that you're able to know how you can take action with all of the emotions that you're going to experience after seeing a film like Sound of Freedom. I read it's described as a sleeper hit uh, you mm. might be familiar with that sort of terminology because uh, a movie that's got a relatively low budget has grossed, uh, you know, more than 10 times uh, what it was actually uh, cost. Uh, a sleeper hit. It's one of those things, and I think it's been a surprise to people that this has been such a hit movie and and it's such a hit with Christians. Any thoughts around, you know, what is the, the draw card from the from the Christian view? Yeah, well, I think well, there's I think there's a few things. I mean, because it is amazing. I mean, Neil, the fact that this film has done more money um, than say Mission Impossible Seven, more money than in the latest Indiana Jones film, it's done exceptionally well, which is even a surprise for those of us within the industry, going, "Wow, what is going on?" But I think that there's a grassroots movement of people kind of going through and supporting a film like this, but. For a film critic position, uh, on top of it, it's a good quality movie. I mean, they, for a low budget, uh, they have a good quality cast. They really handle it um, exceptionally well. I, I would probably point towards the fact that I would see this as less entertainment and more as an education experience. Because I don't, I wouldn't want to necessarily be entertained by this sort of topic um, on a regular basis. But I feel like what they've done respectfully is kind of educate people and then also hopefully move them to um, do, do action with groups like Destiny Rescue and others around the world who are trying to do all that they can to kind of help these children in these horrible situations. So you've got the uh, the main actor, Tim Ballard, a special agent for Homeland Security Investigations, and he arrests people who possess and distribute child pornography. And he realises that much of the problem of this evil trade is managed offshore and online. That's right. So it, it really throws a big spotlight onto where all of this is propagated. Uh, coming back to, and I know you don't like to, to comment too much on the politics, listeners might have a, a, their own thought, but it's one of those sure. sorts of films, and this is what I'm gleaning because I haven't seen the film either, but uh, what I glean is that it's one of those films that calls for action and maybe this is where it's divisive and even partisan, particularly in the United States. But if you don't support the call to action, then somehow or other you could be considered as condoning the child trafficking. I'm not sure mm. whether I've got that actually all uh, perfect in my thoughts, but it's one of those films that actually causes people to need to take action. And if you say, we're not taking action then it's almost like you're condoning the activity. Any thoughts around that? 
Uh, I, I, I don't know if that's necessarily would be fair if the people, because I mean, I think that, I think that um, you can't force somebody to go and take action after seeing a movie, you know, when you're going to see a movie. And so I think that you should, I mean, it, I don't know how somebody can't walk out and go, I've got to do something, you know, or I, I need to talk with somebody. Also, if you just, if you don't go out of this movie and just go hug your children and do all that you can to make sure that they're as safe as possible. Um, I don't know how, how you could not do that. Um, so as far as dividing the audience and forcing people to, if, you know, labeling them because they don't take action, I don't think that's necessarily right in, in itself. While I think that um, it should be something where you, I mean, you should be compelled, especially if you're a Christian, to do something about it. And, and a lot of times, I think when you leave a film like that, you're left with, I don't know. I mean, how, what do I do and where do I turn? But thankfully, there are organizations that you can go to and actually be a part of as far as being a part of the solution opposed to just uh, just kind of consuming the content itself um it does move mo it does move this movie into a different category in the sense of being opposed to just being pure entertainment this is definitely one that really should compel people for action i mean even i mean i, mean, I think one of the reasons why it's done so well financially is because one of the action pieces is say Hey, and tell your friends to go out and see this movie, and then hopefully more people will be exposed to what's going on in the world, and hopefully people will be able to take action to stop it from happening if they can, but also to be praying for these people who are doing it. As you say, not just an entertainment film, but something that is informative and a reminder that there are children who are being abused right now while you're watching right. a film like that. And so there is that sort of tug on the heartstrings, no doubt, to take some action. Hey, one of the uh, one of the organisations that does uh, great Christian insight into films like this is Movie Guide. They oh, have yeah. they have attributed the film's unexpected success to its wide demographic appeal and strong moral values. So mm. when you think a, a film to be successful today has to push the boundaries on morality, here's one that actually supports a very strong uh, morality, a strong moral values around protection of children. And uh, there's Movie Guide, and that's another great Christian organization. They're saying it is. that's one of the reasons why this film is a success. Do you think that's the case? Oh, definitely. I mean, Ted and his group, they've always done great work as far as uh, um, really trying to use, again, using film as a means of kind of communicating the Christian message through all of these various stories. And I think that uh, uh, Movie Guy definitely has um, touched on something that we do. We want to go see movies that really relate with what we're doing, opposed to pushing the envelope, as you were saying, with morality. is actually seeing a good moral center. But then on top of it, it's a good quality film. I mean, uh, I, I think one of the challenges sometimes that where faith-based films tend to get a rap is because they ha may have a great message, but the the quality of the film isn't that good. While this one is actually a, a well-told story, good quality film, very acted exceptionally well. Um, but then on top of it, it definitely probably will encourage people um, and maybe even move people a little bit closer, especially as Christians, to seeing how the Christian faith can answer a lot of these problems of the world. And uh, quite a well-known star of uh, the film too, Jim Caviezel. <laughs> uh, lots of listeners will know him from uh, other great big movie blockbusters like The Passion of the Christ. Is it The Passion? Uh, was it The Passion of the Christ? No. It was, yeah, that's uh, correct. Yes, yep, yes, that's yes. where Jim was. Yep. Yep. Uh, so he was. Uh, go ahead. And, and, of course, uh, backed by and supported by and endorsed by a whole lot of other uh, A-list movie stars. That's right. Well, and, and even um, here in Australia, the release will be by Icon Films, which is Mel, Mel Gibson's um, kind of uh, film production company. So they're the ones that are kind of helping in, in the production of that, along with Movies Change People. So they, uh, um, the, yeah, it definitely has the right backing. I mean, there are... You know, and that also obviously too will bring certain controversies for some because different names have different uh, labels that they get throughout their lives, and so uh, sometimes people can kind of jump on that as far as the controversies. But I would still bring it back to this is a good quality movie with a great message that is worthwhile seeing. Um, I would, I probably would say Neil for your audience, 
this is a does have a lot of mature content in it, and meaning this is not a, a movie for children. I, I would definitely kind of not. I would encourage people just to kind of make sure that you know mature uh, teens and older would probably be the best as far as for this content, and just to be aware of. Uh, one message uh, caller rang through to suggest that the answer to the question, "What can people do?" Pray and fast. That can result mm. in miracles, and uh, we'll encourage that too. Hey, uh, on all the other movies that are out, uh, and there's lots of them, uh, is there something at the moment that you're recommending? Is there something high on uh, you know your list of this is the movie you ought to go and see? We've been talking about a bunch of uh, the blockbusters. Anything new on the horizon that that listeners might think is uh, you know a great movie, perhaps even for family? Yeah, well, probably the the movie for families that I, there's there, unfortunately there's not been a lot of great films there you know as far as for fam, for families down to the young I mean Elemental was probably the last one that I that people would be able to kind of go and see but as far as for families in theaters now that's it's still there and worthwhile engaging with it's called the Miracle Club it's a beautiful film based out of Ireland um, and it kind of talks about a community as they kind of try to get the whole idea of kind of coming together and also a whole message of forgiveness that's really quite beautiful and uh, worthwhile engaging with right now in cinemas. And so that's probably one of the, the top of the list for me. Um, there's Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of other great films outside of Sound of Freedom. I probably would say Sound of Freedom um, – is probably the one that will probably will be on everybody's radar over the next few weeks. So with the movies we've talked about today, let's come back to uh, when you have seen a movie and you might have asked the right questions of it and it might be leading to all sorts of great conversations. The Dive Deeper campaign, City Bible Forum, yep. encouraging people to talk about God in conversations with friends and families and neighbours. Uh, this is coming up in September. was really successful last year as I recall, so uh, the expectation again, this encouragement for, for people to, you know, make a little note and and have those conversations. This is what it's all about, the Dive Deeper campaign. That's right. The Dive Deeper, so it's divedeeper.org.au, and you can go register, register for free. Great, take, take the quiz. It's kind of fun to kind of see what type of evangelist you are. Then get out and just set a goal for yourself of three conversations over three weeks. I think most of us probably could do that. Um, and uh, and then on top of it, it encourages that there's actually a place where you can even put in, if you've had a conversation, um, you can just put some of the details and where that happened. It's always quite an encouragement when others can see that there are others out there doing this very thing. And again, it, we really kind of even go through and define what it is to have a spiritual conversation. So if, if you love Jesus and you love talking about him, especially through all the various interests and things that are out there, including movies, that you can really point people towards this opportunity of um, diving deeper into kind of considering having three conversations over the next three weeks. So, yeah, thanks. I, I Hopefully people enjoy it. And I lo we'd love to hear from you as far as what, what you think of the content once you've gone to the website and checked it out. And City Bible Forum, a great organization, and more than just an encouragement to have those conversations, but uh, you've even got training that people can participate in. Uh, you've got encouragement, you've got resources, and community to motivate people and, ch and churches to join in the program too. Uh, is this something that, you know, if you're part of a, a small church or a big church, uh, that you could actually encourage this sort of campaign as something that will help your uh, people to... Uh, get into those sorts of conversations and engage with others in conversations about faith. Oh, definitely. I think I think that's what's great about this program is that it's it's something that individuals can do, but you can take it to your small groups, you can take it to your churches, and or even uh, encouraging your pastors to be a part of it. What's great about it is that they're, all of the resources, everything is there. It's ready for you to access. And so all you have to do is just kind of be a part of it over the month of September, from September 1st 12th, through to the 22nd, just uh, diving deeper into this. And so, yeah, you can definitely invite all of your community that you're involved in to be a part of it. We'd really encourage that. Russ, always great encouragement. I'm going to give listeners uh, a number of websites because they might want to catch up on your amazing film reviews at realdialogue.com, R-E-E-L-Dialogue.com. They might want to connect with all of the great programs that are being run by City Bible Forum. There's citybibleforum.org, and there are City Bible Forum 
uh, bases uh, in, I think, all of the capital cities all around Australia. And so for people who are in those cities uh, looking for lunchtime, after work activities, really good things that stimulate uh, understanding of faith and uh, being able to introduce people in your workplace into great things, citybibleforum.org. And we've been talking about the Dive Deeper campaign, City Bible Forums encouraging people to talk about God with their friends, family and neighbours. Three conversations in three weeks during the month of September, divedeeper.org.au, divedeeper.org.au to access those resources. And I did mention Russ's book, The Word Becomes (laughs) Film. Russ's book is a modern-day parable that introduces a radically easy way of talking about God's story. You can get a hold of that. It'll be available at the third space Uh, website and also the fastest way to get it on Amazon. Uh, Russ Matthews, always a a privilege and a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your heart and your deep understanding about film with us today on 2020. Always love it. Thanks, Neil. Thank you so much for having me here. 